All right, we're going full YOLO. I took the light bulb current limiter off. We're just gonna try it. Haven't heard anything. Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, you see before you a Dumble Overdrive Special build. I'm do a little bit of montage, and then I'm going to talk through a lot of my build, and hopefully we can get to the end and get a completed functioning amplifier that you can hear. This is going to be a Dumble ODS style. I'm going to use an EL84 base power section. I'll kind of cover the schematic I went through previously with some updates, and I'll probably do an update again at the end, but... Um, wanted to walk through the build. So what you're seeing here before you is my chassis work. I'm using a Hammond chassis. It's aluminum, unpunched. So um, I basically use my square there, my, my triangle square, and I've got a nail and a hammer here to basically use a marker to draw out my layout lines. Then I use the mark, the nail as the hole punch. That helps the drill bit find a center spot, which you see right here. And then I just uh, drill these holes. I just use a regular drill. And then I um, I start with a small drill to try to get it as an accurate first hole. And then I work my way up with larger drill bits and then even use a stepped drill bit. Uh, I find that that's a good way to draw a lot of the holes. Uh, if I have oblong shapes, I'll pull out the Dremel. But for the most part, the drill is really able to cover about everything I need to do. And you can see here, there's the stepped drill bit, which I use to enlarge the holes. Um, once all the holes get cut out, then you do need to deal with the, um, it leaves a little bit of a rough edge. You can see I'm using some sandpaper here to deburr and smooth out those edges because otherwise um, it's just as difficult to work on. It actually mars up your hands pretty bad as you're just assembling things. So, and I want to try to cut down a lot of this so that I, I don't get any wires that get cut either. So now we can move on to mounting the hardware. This is always kind of a fun part. Uh, I just got a bunch of screws and washers and bolts that I just use everything to, to bolt it all to the chassis as best as I can. Try to get nice and tight. I uh, like to use washers and bolts and, and maybe a little bit of uh, thread lock if I really need it. Now I'm laying out the front panel marks. Again, just using a uh, ruler and, and a bunch of different... I kind of calculated how, how many uh, holes and everything that I'm going to need and then try to just kind of draw it on there as best I can using this square here to help keep things a little bit more even and uniform. Um, then here's the back uh, where I've got the IEC and the output jack and there's a couple other things that will go back here too but uh, just trying to lay it out as best I can so that it gets uh, you know even and, and equally spaced. Um, I know sometimes uh, that can be a little bit of a bother for certain folks so I'm trying to do that as best I can. And here we go, all my hardware is mounted. Unwiring on the amp. I wanted to just point out a few things that I think are helpful. First of all, this is my IEC power cord. You can see we've got three plugs. Now this one here says L for live. This middle one is our safety earth and then this other one says N for neutral. Now with my power transformer, I'm on the primary side, I looked up the specs of the power transformer and it tells me to use this layout. So my black and white is right here. Those are wired together and then my brown plus brown white are wired together. Brown and brown white is going right here to the neutral. Then, and that's white wide neutral, that's how I remember it. Then the 120 volts, the live, the live voltage comes here and that's our black plus black white. And that needs to go from the, the outlet first into the switch which is going to be over here and then out of the switch into the fuse and then from the fuse into the transformer. Now uh, for the safety earth you can see I've got this green lug here it's a little bit longer I intentionally did that because I want it in case something were to ever happen with this I want the safety earth to remain intact for as long as possible. 
So I want all these other wires to be pulled out first. If, the, if these power wires are pulled out because they're short, that's no problem. If this green wire pulls out because it's short, then the safety earth could be undone, and we don't want that. Then the only other thing to note, and this is a general policy, I'm making a little extension here. And what I do is I make a little J hook, so it kind of looks like this, where the two wires are being J'd together. And then I take a piece of heat shrink. Well, at first I solder them together, and then I put the heat shrink over top. And I just use my soldering iron actually directly on the heat shrink to nuke it so that it tightens. That's my basic process for making an extension. But that's how I'm going to wire up the power supply here on the primary side. And it's really important that you get the order of the fuse and the switch this way. You know, you want the switch to be right on the power transformer to be protecting that lead. So, um, power supply, the hot, goes to the switch, switch goes to the fuse, fuse goes into the power transformer. So even though I just need a little tiny extension here, I'm still going to do this, make sure I get everything correctly. One other little tiny note, if you can see underneath here, I've got a grommet. This is a little rubber uh, circle that helps cushion the wire against the, power, the chassis. Those uh, openings are, can be a little bit sharp, and over the years if they're rubbing, it could actually cut through that, and you don't want the power supply wires to be contacting the chassis. That could be a problem. So let's keep moving. All right, power supply is completed. Here's our hot coming over to switch into the fuse. Outside of the fuse, coming here into the power transformer. The other side of the power transformer is right here. Safety earth bolted. Boom. Power is ready. All right, check it out, guys. I've got this is the secondary side of the power transformer. These two green wires are my 6.3 volt winding. They're going to tap in right here. These two red wires are my high voltage B+. That's going to go off to the rectifier. And then this wire is a red and blue, which is kind of like a center tap off the high voltage, but it is like a 50 volt winding. So this is going to be actually be my negative DC bias. And these two wires here are just heat shrinked. Uh, they are the 5 volt for the filament. I may need them at some point um, if I do get the relays installed, but I think for now we're pretty good. Just got a single terminal strip here, and I'm going to keep moving forward. All right, we're moving forward. I've got a lot of my power supply here ready to go. We've got the, my two B red leads are coming right here. I got 1N5408 diodes lined facing this way. They both join together here at this point. I've got a 33, I'm sorry, 27 UF filter cap going here to my master ground. And then I've got a uh, 4.7, I'm sorry, a 1K dropping resistor to right here. Then I've got um, also this first B plus out, this line right here, which is going to the output transformer. B plus one. Then second node is right here. We got B plus two going out right there. Got another filter cap right here, 27 microfarads. And then we got a 4.7K dropping resistor. Next node is my second ground bus for all the other filter caps that's running a short little jumper line over here. Then this right here is my next node. So we got B plus one, two, this is B plus three, right there. Then um, we got another filter cap. And uh, we got another 4.7K resistor to here. Again, this filter cap going here to ground. Then another 4.7K dropping resistor to here. And the last filter cap right here going over to ground. Did put a little bit of shielding right on here just to make sure nothing's touching. But So I got B plus one, two, three, four, and five running out. We got filter cap one, two, three, four, five. Got dropping resistors 1K, 4.7K, 4.7K, 4.7K. So uh, yeah, I think my power supply here should be pretty much good to go. 
All right, next, I've decided to do my 6.3 volt heaters. Got green wires running, pins four and five, pins four and five. Then here are my three preamp valves. We want to run to pin nine and one to pin four, which also jumpers to pin five. Again, pin nine, pin four, jumper to five, pin nine, jumper, pin four to pin five. I like to do the heaters at this early stage in the wiring just because I feel like it's a little bit difficult to physically manage everything in space and once you get the components in it's actually a lot harder uh, so I think it's easier to do the these, these heater wires now than later um, and the other thing I'm trying to focus a little bit on is you know you, you want you want to get these tightly twisted pairs but I think one of the thoughts is that the most important part of the twist is actually like here around the tube socket so you want to keep the twist going as close as you can I, I did I kind of lost it over here on this one uh, just because it kind of has to stretch a little ways but basically the idea is you're trying to keep the tightly twisted pair all twisting all the way in to the socket as best as you can and I'm also kind of taking the approach where I'm flying them using three-dimensional space so I'm coming up a little bit and then they come down and in, come up and out, and then, you know, kind of this almost looks like a bridge type pattern. So that's the uh, way I've gone about putting together these heater wires. Pretty happy to have that done. Also had a couple grommets and ran my output transformer wires through. So, um, yeah, we're about ready to keep moving. Next, I think I'm going to take a little bit of time and try to plan out where I'm going to put my tag strips. Um, you know, I'm going to be obviously putting them on uh, these these existing bolts as much as I can, but I'm definitely going to need, I think, quite a few here on this front. This is the front, and and I'm definitely going to want some running along this line to give me a lot of uh, leads for the tone stack. Um, and I'm also kind of trying to think ahead, just to plan it out as best I can, just because this build is going to be a little bit more complicated. I've got a little bit more, you know, I've got two preamp triodes for a lot of gain staging and a lot of switching and, and tone stacking and stuff going on the front of the panel. So I'm um, just going to try to think about ahead about it as best I can. We'll keep moving. This is the Dumbo build. I am over halfway. This is the exterior. We've got our input. This can be our gain, our three switches, treble, mid, bass, this is now these are the two volume controls for the drive channel the gain and then the output level or the uh, ratio then this is the master volume this is the presence we're going to have 12x7 one the overdrive 12x7 and the phase inverter and then our two power tubes and really excited for how this kind of brushed aluminum look is going probably going to maybe come up with another solution for the faceplate but overall pretty pleased with it right now now the circuit this is where we're at right now I'm not going to go through everything but basically what I'm doing this is my input right here and I'm just trying to run short short runs because everything's about the tube socket everything revolves around the tube socket so we've got our V1 tube right here our input tube bounces from here actually goes out goes out of this V1 first gain stage this blue wire into here and this is a lot of our tone stack circuitry right in this area. Here's our three tone switches. Uh, gets a lot of boosting and, and cutting in uh, tone stack shaping. Comes back over here for a second gain stage. Travels out of the plate over to this area. And then um, this is, we kind of run along down this path. And then it has the ability to jump into the drive channel, which is right here. We got our drive channel circuitry kind of in this area, bumping out over here to our volume, our two level controls, which are right here. Now, the only thing to note really of that is I do have some shielded cabling going in here, but really, just for the most part, I'm really just trying to stay as close as I can to these tube sockets. And so I've made it all the way out here to my master volume. Now, keep in mind, I currently don't have the relay switching, so I should have relay switching sending both out the end of the clean channel in this area before it goes to this tube and then also this is my 
ratio pot and it's currently just running straight into the master volume where it should be going to the relay but I'll probably be adding that at a later time but this master is gonna then run to this tube which is our phase inverter now this is the only terminal strip I've got this one and I've got this one I'm thinking I'm probably gonna add one more in this area for my phase inverter uh, but then after that we just need to finish up the power tubes which is actually going to be relatively simple power tubes output transformer wires and that's really it so we're getting close I still have plenty of space up in this area where I'm probably going to be focusing on installing the relays in the future but for now actually this build is really tidy and compact and it's kind of amazing how uh, you can really get some efficient work done with these uh, small chassis. I mean this chassis isn't crazy small, but it definitely is not huge But I'm not having any problems just building really close. I'm keeping my lead short I really only need I mean these shielded cable wires. You can see one goes from here to here one goes from here to here Those are the longest runs that I've got other than that everything else is basically just straight up point to point so You know the only thing that I'm uncertain about is having this these two filament wirings, they're basically right smack dab in the middle of everything. But I'm trying to use kind of three-dimensional space to keep them... I've got wires that go underneath, and I've got wires that come up above. And not a lot that kind of run parallel along with it. They almost are always crossing at a perpendicular angle. So hopefully I'm going to be okay there. But, you know, it's certainly something we can address if we need to in, in the future. But, yeah, we are making some really nice progress. Again, we're going to just got to run from the master wire up the phase inverter which is probably going to be the last tricky part and then just because I, I don't have a ton of space so I think I'm probably going to need to be putting another uh, maybe terminal strip or two I can maybe even put one like on this bolt here or I might just install another bolt like in this area kind of put one like right in about here but um, we have plenty of time to think about that so we're progressing really nicely let's keep moving all right guys this is where we're at fairly confident we've got a working amplifier but we'll certainly find out i really just finished up these are my output transformer leads we've got the blue and brown going to pin seven and seven on the el84s that's our plate this red wire is the center tap that's getting the high voltage off of stage one of the b plus then on our secondary side the black wire is grounded green wire is our 8 ohm tap that's going to the hot wire and then I just have the, the 4 and 16 ohm taps taped off right now I have used 8 ohm cabs for years and years now so for me a 4 and 16 ohms is not necessary so I just tape them off but what I will probably do I mean these output transfer wires are a little long but I want to kind of leave them that way at least for now and while I'm testing the amp and getting this up and running you know I might have to swap the blue and black I'm sorry the blue and brown if there's some positive feedback so there's just a couple different issues that I might have to troubleshoot that I might need to trim those wires later but um, next we're going into startup so we put a fuse in we put an IEC cable in and we just do to take it one step at a time uh, I've gone through startup procedures in the past uh, on my channel on what I like to do for that uh, but I'll, I'll go through them again here just kind of briefly but basically you just want to follow the power supply you know really these these power nodes are the most critical right so you put a power cord in see are you getting 120 volts AC here on your primary side um, then you'll see is that powering right here I've got these two red wires coming out on the secondary for my high voltage am I getting the proper high voltage um, am I getting uh, 6.3 volts AC here on the filaments? And, and, and that is done while it's on the current limiter. Uh, and then we just kind of continue to step our way through. Are we, and then we start adding power tubes, put a load on, uh, check to see, you know, once we get power tubes in, are they drawing the right amount of plate current? Then you know, if that all looks good, then we go to preamp tubes, and we just kind of keep stepping our way through the amp, starting on the power supply, moving to the output section, moving to the preamp, kind of one step at a time. And just confirming, you can be taking a lot of voltages and just checking to make sure everything is looking kosher. So uh, the only problem that I'm going to have is, as I was working on this amp, I fear that my, I've, I currently have two, these two multimeters here, and they've been acting strange. So I'm a little concerned that they're not 
doing very well. So I'll probably what I'm going to do is get like a 9 volt battery and just see if, if they'll do that or I'll test some resistors because I really need to have a multimeter in order to take voltages if I'm going to get the amp biased and if I'm going to test to make sure everything's working correctly. So we really got to do that. But the big question in my mind right now is, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, guys, is this thing going to fire up the first time? Is it, or, or have I made a mistake that's lurking for me to find? So let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys again soon. I am ready for initial startup procedures. Got my light bulb current limiter right here. This is plugged 120 volts into the wall. Out of the light bulb current limiter, I've got this IC power cord. And then right here, I've got my multimeter. This is set to AC volts, and right now it's just monitoring the input side. So I am going to plug this in, double check that I got my fuse in, and we'll see how we go. All right, power cord is going in now. power switch so a brief flash here on the bulb which is normal alright immediately notice something is burning it's coming from this area I see it. This little resistor in here. All right. Well, first startup failed. Back to the drawing board we go. Well, I figured out the smoking resistor is this one right here. It's listed as R924K. This is on the phase inverter. The two triodes here. I think it would burn up because there's too much current running through it, but I honestly can't figure out why that would be. I'm not even sure if or how it's connected to a voltage source. So I'm something is not quite right. We're going to keep diagnosing. All right, guys, right in the center of the screen, you're looking at a yellow wire. The yellow wire has a tiny little cut in it. I think that that wire was pushing up against that spot right there in the center of the screen. And that is a high voltage winding. And I think that that cut in the wire was bleeding high voltage onto that resistor. So I think that's why I cooked that one resistor current from that high voltage. So I'm just going to take this yellow wire out and replace it with a brand new one and I'm going to run it kind of a totally different route because it's got to go all the way over to here. So we're going to fix that but I'm happy at least that I found that problem. Alright guys, I got sidetracked a little bit. My multimeter died and I had to order a new one. This is a new one from Crenova, it's from Amazon, it's pretty inexpensive. Maybe it's garbage, I guess we'll find out. But uh, I've got the amp plugged in, we've got the uh, light bulb current limiter right here, it's going to be off to the side. And then the uh, power cord right here is plugged into the light bulb current limiter. Um, I'm just testing the power supply to make sure that everything works. So I got my black meter on ground here. Um, and we can test that a second. Here's my ground bus. So we know we got continuity there on ground. I'm going to go to AC volts on my meter. Then right here is my input power cord. And if I put it here on this first leg, we got 74.5 volts. Hopefully you can see that. Now I think that's because, you now if I go over to the other side, That's 46.5, so those two numbers added together, I think, are approximately 120. Um, let's let's do a little calculator math, just what everybody wants to see. We'll do 74 plus 46 is 120. So, yeah, we are at about 120 volts. 46 there, what did I say this one was? 74. So, I think that anybody who's an electrical expert, I'd actually love to know why... Again, I'm measuring between ground, and I'm just checking between the the common and the neutral. I, I guess, to be honest, I'm not an electro expert on house wiring, why that would be. I think that that is an indicator that my how the ground in my basement here is floating, or 
I'm not totally sure. If anyone knows, I'd love to, to hear. But um, any which way, I think that that means I'm getting 120 volts in. So next, I want to put my positive lead right here. This is the, where the red wires are coming out from the power transformer. So that should be my high voltage B+. Plus. Actually, before we do that, I'm also going to go here. Let's just check to see if we get... I'm going to flip the amp on. We got 3.24 volts AC right there, so that's a good sign. And then let's go here. 333 volts AC coming from the power transformer. And I don't think I have any other leads. I've got these two 5 volt leads, but they're just taped off. So um, 330 volts coming from the secondary, that seems good to me. Let's go ahead and bump over to DC and see how much rectified voltage we're getting. I'm doing all this testing with one hand behind my back and one hand. I like using these insulated leads. I feel a little safer doing this. 473 volts of direct current. And then let's just check like our last B plus node. 471. Now there's no tubes drawing any current, so I think that would explain why I'm not getting a lot of drop down, but I think so far so good. Maybe that's a little high, but we shut the amp off. It's also interesting just to watch. This might be a good time to check. I've got my draining resistor. You can see it's draining slowly, but if I were to touch these filter caps right now, that would be pretty dangerous. So maybe as an interesting test, um, let's just pop this on and see what happens. So you can see it dropping down there very quickly. And the value of the resistor, I don't actually remember what the value of my resistor is, but the value of the resistor going on between those two points will obviously have a big impact on how quickly it drains. But um, I think so far so good with my power supply drain this all the way and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some tubes in see if we can get this thing to start up all right I ran into a unique problem I was installing my L84 ready to test things um, and I went to install this tube and it simply will not go in that's weird so I did a visual inspection of each of the little holes this is just a piece of wire so one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this, this pin hole, and then six, seven, eight, nine. So actually two, you know, the each with each of these I have a little, I don't know if it's a couple of millimeters of depth. So you know, it's basically just the depth of the feet of these pins, right? I mean, it's just this much distance right here. I have the ability to put this little piece of wire down in, but in pin five, it's all gummed up, and there is there is no depth. So that's annoying. I think what I'm going to try to do is have someone help me. I will have them man this wire and try to push the wire in, and I'm going to take the soldering iron from below, see if I can clear the way. But that's that's kind of annoying. Uh, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to change out the tube socket. So, I guess we'll keep going. Alright, this is the tube socket. I'm honestly not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but... One, two, three, four, five is dark. Six, seven is dark. Because they're all plugged up. That's annoying. Just, uh, this was actually a socket I had in a previous build. I had reused it. And I think I just flowed too much solder and it sucked up in there. So, my own fault. Learn, do better next time. Alright, I got my new socket installed. As you can see, they don't match. So I apologize to those of you out there that that may offend, but I am going to live with it. Flipping it over. Uh, actually, installing that new socket is a giant pain in the rear, but... We got her done. 
Uh, it actually gives me a chance to clean up some of my wiring. But everything's okay now. We are we should be good to go. I um, have the EL84s in. Now, when I did my first power on, again, we've got light bulb current limiter. Now, the current limiter is going to make your voltages weird. And also, not having the other tubes is going to make voltages weird. But I just want to see a quick... Little testerino. I'm gonna put my black leg on there. My red leg. I'm actually gonna put. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to do this one? I'm gonna put it here on my first B plus node. So this is right after the rectifier. And let's see. Is that a good spot right there? Okay. At 0.5 of a volt. Light bulb current limiter brights for a second and then dims. Now, I think that I'm just looking and I can see that the filaments are what are glowing. I haven't blown a fuse. You know what? I think with power tubes installed, I need to have a load installed. But if whoops. All right, I have my load installed. This is just a speaker cable going into a two notes captor. We're just gonna flip it on. The light bulb current limiter brights for a second. You can see my voltage here. This is the voltage that would be coming to the first node that's going to like the output transformer center tap, which I believe is this red slash yellow wire here. And my voltage is kind of steadying at a little about 325, which actually is nice. Now, I, like I said, with the light bulb current limiter, that is going to affect the voltage, but I'm um, just watching. I'm smelling for smoke. I'm looking to see that the filaments are glowing, which they are. I'm looking to see if I've blown a fuse, and I'm just looking to see if everything is stable, which it appears that it is. So that's nice. Okay, I'm going to turn it off a second. What I'm going to do is get a different lead for my multimeter. I want to test some other voltage points basically all along my power rail. Okay, I'm going to take this red one out, put this one in. The one with the clip is nice, but I want to be able to be a little bit more agile. Okay, I'm going to flip it on again. Again, just monitor. Okay, I'll go to my second B plus node. Three twenty nine at the first. Now. I'm looking to see, I think I need to go here. I think I was actually on the ground point. 322. So let's see, our first node is 324. Second is 322. Ground, then this next one. 322 again. 322. 322. Now that, I don't know if I'm going to look as that as a sign of trouble or anything yet. Let's just go ahead over here. This is like my V1. Feeding my plates, 324. And then... ...321, but I think that's because there's no tube drawing any current. But I think so far we're so good. Let's check my AC voltage for heaters. I'm just going to check this guy right here. Getting a 2.4, which is a little low, but that might be attributed to the current limiter. Let's try this guy. Yeah, 2.4, so I, I think that's fine. I want to do a little check now of like my whole V1 
stage. So we're going to go back to DC volts. So pin 1 is a plate, 324. Pin 2, 0 0.5, that's good. The cathode, 0, that's good. Heater, heater, now this one's another plate, 321. This is a grid, 0 0.3, and another cathode, 0. So, so far so good on that tube. I think we're okay. Shut the amp off and keep going. Okay, now I've got my hot lead on pin two of the EL84. I'm sorry, pin three. All right, I've got the amp on. We are looking at pin three, which is my cathode. I'm running a one ohm resistor. And I just want to keep an eye out here. Uh, due to Ohm's law, through a one ohm resistor, this should be giving me a relatively close ver accounting of my plate current. So we're currently at about, it's jumping around just a little bit. 29 right there. I can see that they're illuminating nicely with an orange glow, but I don't see any signs of like red plating. So I just wanted to check that before I move forward. That looks fine to me. I just want to make sure I'm not blasting this thing with like a bazillion milliamps of plate current. Okay, I have preamp tubes installed. All right, I got preamp tubes installed. I still have my light bulb current limiter on. I have the full tube complement, so um, I want to monitor the voltage that's going to be going to the plates. I think of the first preamp stage, I'm going to put this on my very last, I think this is B plus node 5. Got DC volts, 31 volts right now. Here we go, here goes, I got my load box plugged in, Let's see what we see. Looking for burning, smelling. I'm going to look at my preamp tubes, see if they start illuminating. Okay, can you hear that? I think that's my load box screaming due to positive feedback. But I think that's a good sign. So I think that means I need to switch my output transformer wires. Now, I'm sorry, I also realize I've got the laundry going, so I'm sorry about that. But um, that's just the truth of the situation. So I'm gonna discharge my filter caps. I'm gonna switch. So this brown and blue wire need to be swapped. Um, because I think there's some positive feedback. Basically this load box that I've got, it's a resistor, but it will kind of um, squeal a little bit if that's what's going on in the amp. So I think, I think we should be pretty much good to go. I think that's a good sign. At least it's making some amount of noise. Let's uh, swap those wires and keep moving. Okay, I got my Output transformer wires flipped around, so that should defeat the positive feedback problem. I'm still monitoring my B plus 5 node for DC volts on the plate. Uh, I guess that's, that's going to feed the B plus node, which will feed the plates. And I have a speaker plugged in. Um, YOLO? I think I want to hear something out of the speaker. I'm definitely hearing a buzz or a hum.
Turning the gain control doesn't seem to affect it. Nor the switches. Or the tone controls. Well, there's a little hummer buzz coming out of the speaker. The controls didn't seem to affect the sound of the hummer buzz, but are we just going to YOLO a guitar into this thing? I think the answer is yes, my friends. I've got a guitar cable. I've got a Mustang. I am expecting that this is not going to produce any sound. My guitar volume is up. weird. I think that's mostly because of the light bulb current limiter. Oh my goodness, the volume works. Oh my goodness. It works, it works, it works. All right, we're going full YOLO. I took the light bulb current limiter off. We're just gonna try it. I haven't heard anything. It's pretty quiet. That's full gain. Trouble. I don't know if my bass control is working. Was this mids? I can't even tell. That first switch makes a big change. Ha <laughs> ha! 
see if we can get a clean tone at all. Master all the way up. Just a one on the volume. sound was well it's working I have an amp I something's wrong I think with the tone control presence worked master worked the gain, the, the ratio and level controls worked, treble worked, this first tone switch worked, input gain worked. Ha! Did I just nuke my... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that big sparking sound was, that kind of freaked me out. But hey, we got a functioning amp. We'll uh, work towards getting it buttoned up, but I'm pretty pumped to be this far.
I hope you enjoyed that video. This was one of the more uh, exciting builds that I've done, maybe ever. Uh, probably the most difficult amp I've ever attempted to build, but also in some places the most rewarding. I'm not calling it done yet. I still need to do the relays. I, I forgot to add a pilot light. Um, so there's a couple other little things, quirks I got to work out. I, I think one of my switches still needs to be finished. Maybe the tone stack isn't quite working, maybe perfectly, but really excited where I'm at now. I've got a working amp. It sounds like a Dumble. It sounds really good in my opinion. It's fun to play. Uh, it's not so insanely loud that it's unusable, so it's going to be a really usable, workable amp for me. Just a lot of exciting, fun things about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Please subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.